How do we know if we're playing it too safe in our career? Oh my gosh, I love that question so much. Um, I think it's a, if we can slow down long enough to listen to our bodies, we can feel it. We can feel it in our bones, we can feel it in our, our belly, where there's a sense of dissonance. And so um, going back to this idea of values, and so if you're playing it safe in your career, I'm gonna say just by the nature of that question, that the value underlying that is like, let me take some risks, let me really meet my potential, let me like pursue possibility. And so if you're not doing that, you're probably gonna, if you can slow down, just like feel it in your body in some form, like maybe your gut is like a little bit clenched or your neck is a little bit tight or your jaw is like, you know, really hanging on. And so then leaning into curiosity, like, okay, what's happening in my body? Where is that coming from? And so there's definitely a point in my career where I was totally playing it safe. And if I could have slowed down long enough, I think I would have start, started to understand some of like the, the aches that I was feeling in my body. And I think I could have connected the dots. Um, Another way, I think, to know if you're playing it too safe in your career is, um, is if, you're not, um, if you're not getting those results, if you're not feeling successful, if you're not feeling fulfilled, that you may be on someone else's treadmill and not your own because you believe that that other treadmill is going to validate you in some way, but you're not actually aligned with your values and your purpose. Do you think there's a possibility of playing it too safe, especially like the entertainment industry or even venture capital, Silicon Valley? There's like these big swings, you know, and oh, go big or go home. And, you know, it's almost rewarded. Yeah, that's another really, really great question, because I think there's an important distinction between playing it too safe from a place of fear versus being patient and strategic. And so I think you really have to look at and feel into, is it fear-based or am I honoring a value and listening to my intuition? And so I'm just gonna give another example where I feel like I've said yes to career opportunities out of fear and, and I think feeling like, okay, I'm playing it safe, I'm going too slow, I want things to move along more quickly and where if I would have slowed down enough to identify, okay, what values am I honoring and saying yes to this opportunity? How is this honoring my purpose? How does it fit into the bigger overall strategy of how I want my life to look like? I think I, I probably would have made some different choices. You know, I, it seems to be a major theme of everything I hear from you is just really like listening to within. You think that's possible? Is that possible in a fast-paced, you know, town like Los Angeles in the entertainment industry where there's other people that they're just going to say yes, they're not going to listen to anything? Is that is, are we are we being realistic? Can we really kind of own and listen and feel what's in our body in this industry? Not only do I think it's possible, I think it's absolutely critical in order to be able to have long-term success and longevity and fulfillment absolutely it's we're in such a interesting moment in time right now where there's so much contraction in the entertainment industry and business models have been disrupted and we haven't figured out how to put those pieces together again and it's not even going back to something it's like it's carving out something new so there's a real kind of um, pioneer energy to what's happening. And so the only way to be able to navigate that is to go inward and to listen and to have quiet time because um, there's a, a time to fail quickly and there's a time to listen deeply. I think right now is a time to be listening deeply. I'm not sure if you saw the TED Talk with Dolph Lundgren. Oh, I didn't. Oh, well, I highly recommend it. And he talked about having all the success, but that he realized inside there was all these things that he hadn't been listening to because he was so busy 
becoming and doing all these things and that he was able to finally stop and, and realize what different things that had happened to him. But for so long, he was just going, going, going. Yeah. And I think, did you talk about this as, as well? And just how we, sometimes we have to kind of swallow any feelings because we, we can't show up <laughs> on the job, of course, or, or on set uh, broken or, or depressed. You know, we have to maintain. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I have two thoughts on that is, is one is that, I mean, once you get the opportunity and you, you get the job, whatever that might be, there's, there's so much pressure because there is so much competition of like, oh, I've got my opportunity. I better not screw this up. And there are people who are counting on me. And so like, if I'm not prepared or I make a mistake or I make a failure, A, I'm going to screw up my life and my career, but that also has impact on everybody else. So yeah, it, like, it, it requires a level of suppressing, negating, uh, repressing feelings. But in the big picture, that doesn't really help. It may help in the day, but it doesn't help in the overall because it's creating so much stress and tension and anxiety. And then that starts to filter into not just your own work, but also the work because entertainment is collaborative. And so it starts to have an, have an impact for sure. And I, I'd love to say one other thing on this point, which is and this comes from, again, this, like, this perspective of being a people pleaser and a perfectionist, which I feel like a lot of people in the entertainment industry really share that. And it creates a spiral. So for me, where the way that I can be a people pleaser is if I'm engaged with people and there's a task and it's like, great, I've got a task, I can do it and I can do it really well and I can get an add a girl. And so, but it's like eating cotton candy. And so great, I got the add a girl, but now I need another one because it's, it doesn't actually have any real nutritional value. So it just gives me like this instantaneous high, but there's no real sustainability or foundation to that. So then I need another task and another task and another task. So when you talk about Dolph Lundgren's um, TED talk, I really get that because he had to keep showing up and he kept saying yes so that he could get his attaboy. And, and the pressure of that, because if he screws up, then he's not going to get another opportunity. And it creates this horrific spiral that, again, just is not sustainable. It really has huge impact personally, professionally, and within our communities. You know, that's a great thought in terms of, yeah, people in any type of entertainment being people pleasers. And that's kind of what you're doing. You're performing. And, okay, can you dance faster? Okay, great. That's right. We want to please the audience any type of content creator. So that's, yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah. And it's like, I feel like it shows up and on every level, whether you're below the line, above the line, whether you're an executive or, you know, like whatever it is, it just like, it shows up. 